All right, well, Adam, it's a huge staple in the industry. We had to stop by. Paul, we've been talking a lot about remote uh, work for people, being separated yeah. in teams. We're seeing a lot of cloud that happening out there right now. Yeah. You guys are, are kind of jumping into that with this Connect, but there's a lot more to this than I'm hearing. So tell me yeah, about yeah. this Connect right now. Yeah, I mean, this does propel us into the whole cloud workflow, but of course, that needs explaining, doesn't it? Yeah. Everyone talks about cloud, but... So yeah, first of all, the products, which obviously the, the hardware that enables this, the first product that we've got that we're launching with is the Atomus Connect module. Okay. So this is for the existing Ninja 5 and Ninja 5 Plus user. Okay. Which is perfect. I mean, that's how it's all been designed because we wanted to make sure this new workflow, this extension of workflow, we could we could apply to all of our existing hundreds of thousands of Ninja users. Okay. So it's a fully integrated module. As you can see, it's a wraparound module that uses the same expansion port, port as our other accessories that we that we have, like the Atomic Sync. It's part of the SDI. system. Yeah, part yeah. of the system. And it's and it's you know you got the LP6 battery, so you probably already have a few of those existing if you're if you're at all in this industry, right? Yeah. And the real thing about this is the connectivity. So it's if I got someone else editing somewhere else, and I'm working in the field, I got proxies yeah. Yeah, to shoot yeah, yeah. over. Tell me how that actually works. Sure. So in terms of getting the input in, we've got you can have an HDMI camera, you can have an SDI camera. So it's got 12G SDI port on the module. That's great. So now you can connect into anything. Yep. You've got your camera. You're bringing it in. The firmware that's associated with having this module on can do can do a new feature of dual record. So this is where it, this is where it works into FrameIO. This is so this is the workflow. So whereas before, which, which by the way they're partnering with FrameIO on this one. Yeah. Yeah. So FrameIO camera to cloud. So the way it works is that previously you would have had to choose which codec you want to record in. Right. Could be ProRes RAW, could be ProRes, could be DNX, could be H.265. But what we can do now is put it into a mode where we record simultaneously two different files. A high-res file, okay. which could be on the Ninja 5 Plus, or Native. the new Shogun Connect, which I'll show you in a minute, could be ProRes RAW, let's say 4K30, and at the same time, we can record a proxy HD30 file, H.265. Wait, are both, both recorded locally? Both recorded locally on okay. the SSD. Okay. We've now got the connectivity with Wi-Fi 6 or the Gigi Ethernet okay. to be able to send that to the cloud. So the way it works, is that we connect to, we've got a whole new cloud service called Atomus Cloud Studio. It's called Cloud Studio because it's a suite of services. One of those services we've just launched with, is, as you said, is Adobe Camera to Cloud, Frame.io, Adobe company. Welcome to trade shows. <laughs> um, so basically, once we, once we connect this device to the Atomus Cloud, we can then say, right, we want to go into Frame.io Camera to Cloud workflow. Click on the button that says on our web portal, that just says I want to connect to frame, type in the frame username and password. This device is now part of Camera to Cloud. Now what that means is I start recording on this from my favorite mirrorless camera. As soon as I start recording, the high res file and the proxy file are being recorded onto the SSD. Mm -hmm. But it's also going up, the proxy file is going up over Wi-Fi or Ethernet to Atomus Cloud. Progressive file upload. Once I stop recording, the file gets closed off, and we send that whole proxy file directly to Frame.io. Okay. Within so seconds, that file appears in your Frame.io project. someone else can go work with it. They can go work with it straight away. So we're talking edits. about faster workflow, streamlining. We're talking yeah. about same day edits while someone else is already yeah. still shooting. Same minute edits. So we're talking, I mean, you're at the Olympics or something like that. Yeah. You're just getting it done. You're at a, in a live event. You're basically working live and still able to edit if you think about it. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. And, and because you can actually change the, the bit rate of the proxy file. Now, you could have a high, if you've got a good bandwidth, and it doesn't take much bandwidth, but you could have a much higher rate H.265 file, which looks great. Yeah. So if you're working, as you say, like at a live sporting event or a live event, you want to get some content um, up into the cloud, edited, and out on social, yeah. you just use the H.265 file. It looks great, HD. But this, you know that you've still got the a, a pre, a pristine you have a local, 4K yeah. local file. Yeah, yeah. So you have it. You're already you're creating a backup file as you're shooting. Yeah. Right. You have it in multiple places, so in case something happens yeah. somewhere, it goes down. If this got stolen or something, who knows? Even knows, right? Yeah. But also, this is also looking for a connection to like a hotspot, right? So even if I just had a cell phone, yeah, I could get this out exactly. into that cloud. Exactly. So this exactly, you just connect this Wi-Fi. To your hotspot of your phone, and you're out on 5G LTE. This is insane. And now, because of because, and because we're recording both of those files ourselves, right? Everything matches on that file, time code, 
metadata file name. So when you then take those proxy files, let's say in frame, drag them across in the, in the pre, uh, Premiere extension for frame, you're editing it already, as you say, like within seconds. Yep. You then decide, a day or so later, you then get the original media back. You literally upload that, you, you ingest that in, into your NLE, and just click the, the relink button, you know, substitute for high quality, because everything matches instantaneously. Your cut timeline, your program, now becomes the 4K ProRes RAW version. Oh no, you're all on the same project. It's yeah. not just slinging files. You're in a project in sync. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Wow, this is crazy. So, what are the actual hardware? We got the Connect and, and... Yeah, so the actual hardware, we've got the Atoms Connect, which you say is the module for the Ninja 5 and 5 Plus. Okay. Then, we've got the first new fully integrated product called the Shogun Connect. So, this is a fully integrated product. Same features, actually, as, as the um, Atoms Connect. Wi-Fi 6, Giga Ethernet. We've got a little bit of I.O. or extra I.O. on this. Oh, and of course, I missed an important bit. We've got Air Glue Wireless Sync. So, if, you've got, if you're shooting multicam, okay. or you've got separate audio, you need everything time-coded together, don't you? You need everything, yeah. you need everything in sync right. for multicam. Absolutely. We've got built-in long-range wireless sync on all of our connected products, which is, the, which is this antenna. We call it air glue. So it's long-range RF sync, air glue. We're <laughs> oh, gluing everything together in sync. Right, okay, cool. over the air, wireless. That's great. It's also got a Bluetooth protocol, so we can sync wirelessly over Bluetooth to apps, to the Mavis Pro camera app, let's see. So you can shoot on your iPhone in sync with your mirrorless camera or a professional camera, separate audio. Is Everything wild. is in sync. And, and it's an intelligent, it turns these into intelligent connected devices. So the other I.O. on this um, is we've got an extra SDI out port. Okay. We have got a USB port that can be used in the future for, for mounting warm. external media. Okay. Uh, an LTE dongle, maybe, a 4G, 5G dongle. You can never go wrong with having USB on anything these days. You can't. So. You can do anything with it. Yeah. Um, and then the product, we've got a super bright 7-inch, 2000 nit HD screen, HD, HDR screen. That is pretty it's, bright, yeah. It's the same screen that's on the Shinobi 7. We've got such good feedback from the Shinobi 7, we pop that screen in so here. So if you're used to that screen, you know what this screen looks like. I also happen to notice on this core battery, you got an Atom X on here. Is this another yes. collaboration? It's a whole new collaboration. We'll talk through that. You're being all separate. you're being friends with everybody all of a sudden. We are. Yeah, we, hey we frame are. IO, hey core. We are. We're friends yeah. with everyone. Uh, listen, I don't know anyone that hasn't somehow along the way used Atomus in yeah. some way or another. You guys have been around for a long time and definitely like a standard, if not like a known entity forever in external recording. We've been and that's what we've been yeah, going yeah. towards. And, and, now and you're as connecting. You say, being, as you say, being friends with everyone. I mean we we've been collaborating, as you say, with with ProRes Raw, with obviously the ProRes Raw ecosystem. We've we, we now support over 40 cameras for ProRes RAW. RAW yeah. out of eight, RAW over HDMI. I mean, you got a Z9 HDMI. right here. I yeah. mean, you guys are always going forward. Look, we're going to keep an eye on this one. This And you're always creating a full system, but this is this is wild to be able to have remote access and have everybody working in the same yeah. uh, project like that. That's, That's really, it. really great. So I'll talk about the other the other cloud features. You know what I was saying, that we go from here into, into the um, cloud studio. Well, once you're in that cloud studio, we've just talked about Frame.io, camera to cloud, which obviously is super cool. We can go into anything. So we could then go in, when we launch these products in June, so we're launching both these products in June, and actually price point wise, $399 for the, for the Atoms Connect for Ninja, Yeah. $1299 for the Shogun Connect. Okay. Super competitive. Yeah, you, yeah. Think, you think what you're well, getting for that. It's also a, a system. I mean, you're not just yeah. buying a product here, you're, you're creating an entire new workflow that'll save you so much on the back end as resources go forward. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah no, totally. I get you, I feel you, man. So, so once we're in Atomus Cloud, we can then take these devices and when we're shipping in June, you can then also decide, rather than going to Frame.io Camera to Cloud, let's stream to YouTube, let's go to Twitch. Live stream. So you just it. configure in Atomus Cloud, I'm going to go to YouTube, type in your streaming keys. Wait, wait, so you're telling me record local, record stream local, out the platform. Stream to YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at Fernando because I know exactly where we're going to go with this. Okay, well, we're definitely going to uh, keep it honest. We're definitely going to have to try it, so you're welcome to get us units. <laughs> By the way, I haven't finished. Oh, boy. One more, uh, two more services to talk about for the cloud. Sir, we're running out of an audience attention span. <laughs> well, okay, what are the last file, file sharing. File to, sharing. To your favorite platform, coming later on in the year. Okay. And then the most insane live production in the cloud. These devices will be a feed into a live production for a full suite, like an OB truck, of a polished production for multi-camera, graphics, talkback, sounds. So tally. almost an OBS system, a virtual a, switcher? A complete outside broadcast system, like a truck. 
in the cloud that these guys will connect to. So a virtual broadcast switcher. Yeah. In the cloud, in the while clouds. you're beaming, while you're recording local, yes. while you're live streaming. Yes. Is that enough? I don't know. Is Adams taking over the world? Is that what you're basically saying? Because so. you just said that and walked off. <laughs> no, this is in, this is super exciting. I can see why you guys are so excited about yeah, no, it. We're we, really we were hearing about it, but we're like, what could this even be? Ah, it's yeah. got antennas. All right. No, this is a this yeah. is insane. You guys have always pushed the envelope, and this yeah. is no different. Paul, thank you so much. You're welcome. Check out all the links if you guys want more info on it, and obviously it'll be evolving as it goes forward. And of course, they're going to keep on doing updates and stuff like that. So don't miss out on this. Paul, thank Cheers. you so much for your time, man. Cheers. Later. All right, so one of the best things about this show is finding the stuff that not a lot of people know about. You know the big brands and they have their releases and all that stuff, but every now and then you find something like a startup. This is audio, what, design desk. I'm literally learning this right now. I got grabbed by this kid right here. You gotta take a look at this. And you know what, he, get over here, look. Oh, okay. This kid right here <laughs> grabbed me in the middle of nowhere. He's like, I saw the channel and you guys gotta look at this. And you know what, he's right, because even NAB themselves have nominated this as product of the year and they just won. So. I got Jared over here. There's a lot to explain. We're gonna go into basically what it is, why it applies. We focus a lot on speed with editing, especially nowadays where like us, we're, we're editing this video today to get it up today. Part of that is audio. You can watch bad video with good audio, but you can't have a great video with bad audio. And if you can elevate that audio, you're elevating the whole production value. What you guys have built is basically like a speed editing system with resources and assets for you to use on the fly, am I right? So yes, you absolutely. have a whole library of sound. It's mainly transitions and sound effects, right? Yes. So give me a real quick, like, what is this? What is Audio Design Desk? So Audio Design Desk is a brand new DAW that we built from the ground up using the idea of machine learning and AI to quickly uh, tag sounds. Uh, then we can teach it what those sounds exactly are. That way you can quickly trigger those sounds and bring it into your project. So Yeah, so pretty much you're going through your video and you're able to drop markers fast, but you're not just dropping dumb markers. You're able to go, well, this is a transition. This is a hit. If you're actually filming something that's like, well, you were just showing us like something with like a BMX rider. Well, you want that swoosh coming up. You want that hit when they land. Well, you're just watching and doing that. Then it gives you automatically generated sounds. Yes, and we can uh, actually refine those parameters. So if uh, on the surface level, it is uh, fairly random. If you just say hit, it's going to search through our library, find a hit, place it right there. But we can get very specific and say, let's get a metallic hit. Let's get a metallic hit that's this intense. Let's uh, get a metallic hit that's this intense and maybe in this key even. So then it finds those sounds and places it for you. Can you show me that thing you show me where you can actually type in a word like bicycle wheel and then it kind of like, so, so what's basically Absolutely. happening here is you're not just stuck on what it thinks you want, you're able to have a starting point. Think of it as like a preset. Maybe it's not exactly what you want or fits what you're trying to do, but it gives you a baseline and then you go, well, I actually want it to be faster, slower. I want it to cut here. I want it to stretch out here. You can actually change it. They can even give you like uh, vibes, right? They were just showing us Halloween sounds that may not have fit, so they, they move that. So there you go. He's finding, just from typing in words that fit what's visually in the frame, he's finding, or it's finding, based on vocabulary, some stuff that might work. And if you're working fast, maybe it's not the exact sound or something you would go out there and record, but you're saving a day of recording your own sound. You're, you're saving hours trying to figure out something that will fit. And if it's just getting you in the ballpark, sometimes that's good enough because we're moving that fast. So you're talking about amateurs elevating their production value. You're talking about pros working faster. You're talking about media getting to platforms faster and moving at today's speed. We had to stop by this booth. So if you guys get a chance, check out Audio Design Desk. Right, yep. I'm, I'm guessing you have some sort of website. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, our website is actually right here. It's add.app. Add.app. Team that got they got those new kid nowmore.com like those old guys. <laughs> A.app. Check that out, but also keep in mind you're gonna want to keep watching them because they just told us every week they're dropping new sound libraries. Like you are getting free royalty free sounds every week, which is bananas. You are able to use this in Final Cut right now. Yeah, well, yeah, we are integrated with uh, all, all uh, editing softwares, but with Final Cut, we now have this nice bridge that allows us to quickly send sounds back and forth between your edits. Yeah, so it's growing as, as they're going forward. So this is like ground floor feeling-ish, and they're gonna work off of user feedback, obviously, so feel free to yell at Jared yes. and this kid Danny that grabbed Absolutely. me. Guys, this is the, kind of the best part of NAB, is not only seeing what's new, but what's also just really exciting and setting a tone going forward. We focus on video, we focus on, on the cameras, the lighting. Well, we can't miss out on the audio, especially the interface to make the audio. Jared, thank you so, I know this was like a Absolutely. blitz, but thank you so much, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Check it thank out, you. right guys?
All right, so over at that Adams booth, we saw those core batteries in use, a little Adam X logo with the nice collaboration going on there. So we had to stop by the booth, and I'm seeing my buddy John, I've seen you a few years. A few years has been, yeah. And I'm like, hey, what do you got that's doing? He's like, oh, tons of stuff, like dual voltage. What do you yes, mean sir. dual voltage, man? What is this? So here we have our Helix system. It comes in a variety of mounts. Obviously, we're familiar with the three stud mount, V mount, and the new B mount. So. Uh, dual voltage just means it does 14 and 28 volts. Uh, you need a helix plate to unlock that higher voltage. Which makes total sense because you don't want to damage anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, make sure the devices are safe, etc. But what's also nice, just to keep it more cost uh, inducive for people so they don't have to spend a whole chunk of change, these will actually work on standard 14.4 volt chargers uh, that we have here. So any of our existing chargers or even the new, you know, mock series that we have right so here. So it's a system. I mean, you, can, you just know that it'll be able to work. It'll be able to be yep. uh, talking to each other. It's, it's a system for either higher voltage, but you can also use the 14.4 volts on the lighting application, light panels, Astras, Geminis, et cetera. Um, and then standard even on cameras too. Uh, Sony FS7, even on yeah. the V-mount, this will just fit natively and give 14.4 power. But if we're changing volts, what's up with the amps? Um, great question, great question, thank you. Because with our max, max just means it can handle a lot higher amperage. So okay. it's 20 amps at 14.4 volts, um, and then 10 amps okay. at the higher voltage, which can go up to 33. Very cool. So everything going to the same charger, are the, is it a, a, a kit with the plates? The plates come separately? Can you buy them a la carte? Yeah, you can buy them a la carte. We chose it to do it that way, um, just so people can kind of cherry pick what they have, um, whether it's a lighting application, whether it's the Venice, you know, Venice 2 as an example. Right. Um, you know, works that way. They just get specific plates for specific applications. I, I tell you, whenever you come to a show like this, you want, like, the cameras, this, the, that, the lighting, and then it's like, batteries. Yeah. And you think there's no innovation, but then you realize how much relies Exactly. on battery and Absolutely. everything boils down to power. You could have the most beautiful camera in the world <laughs> with the nicest sensor, but if it can't turn on, it's well, a paperweight. It, it's know? just a weight in your bag, yeah, right? Exactly. Well, this is very cool. And as we go forward in this industry, I think everyone can agree with higher data that we're creating, more stuff we're, we're rigging together, more processing power we need, exactly. you need that power. Exactly. So would you agree that we're going higher in voltage as we go forward? Yeah, everything's going higher voltage. It seems lighting applications have gone that way and obviously in the whole cinema style setup. People just need more power. Um, and one thing I do want to mention, we do have the USB and power taps on there for any accessories as well. Wait, you can power out of a USB on this? Yep. Oh, yeah, that's right. I feel like you can't go wrong by putting USB on like any everything, yeah, right? Exactly. Just like scamming on there. Well, John, uh, as always, yeah, thanks so much. It's good to it, see man. you finally. You. Keep an eye out for the green if you're looking at some battery options. And we'll, uh, we'll see what's going on with the rest awesome, of the show, man. Buddy. Good, good man. Good. Great seeing you. Well, we're at the Seagate booth with Carrie, and this is where you get like super pro end, but it's also showing where we are, where we're totally mobile. So if you're doing really, really high-end productions, lots of data, lots of NDA, lots of high-profile data that you have to worry about, that's where this comes in, right? The live mobile array, you're calling it? Yes, sir. So what, what exactly is this? What am I looking at? Live mobile array is mass capacity storage from, to be utilized from edge to core. So this is enter, enterprise grade modular mobile storage. It's got our Exos or Nitro drives inside, the same drives that we use in our enterprise grade systems. It's got the RAID uh, chip in here. So this is RAID 5 XFAT file format. It connects on the back with PCIe Gen 3 adapter, USB-C. So you're always good. Or Thunderbolt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right? you don't have to so worry about what's move, on the other end. Yeah, you can move stuff fast. You can overcome your network dependency in the field so that you can move things. You can bring it into the enterprise data storage Yeah, I mean, system. look, we're on a production cart right now. Yep. Let's say you just did this, and then you have a rack mount system, which is half deep. Half rack deep. This fits in a DIT cart. You pull it out like a morgue, <laughs> like a morgue cabinet, and you go put it right back in. This rack mount receiver connects uh, via iSCSI fiber channel or SAS cool. in the data center. How about the size of the actual drives? What are we talking about? Size of the drives. Like how much capacity do I have on this? So this uh, comes in a 96 terabyte uh, hard drive, uh, 92 terabyte SSD, 60 terabyte HDD, or a 46 terabyte SSD. 96, I think we'll go with 96 terabytes, right? Yep. And of course, no more gaff tape. 
magnetic well, labels. Look at that. You can actually tell what it is, guys. It's amazing how much technology goes into it. It always comes down to a marker and some kind of magnet or something, right? But that's, that's actually super important because you're going to have a lot of these. But what you showed me, which was cool, was the LED that glows around here. You can color code that. So you can just be like, oh, purple is our dailies or whatever. And you'll always know just by a glance what it is. But yeah. I thought what was really important as well is it's protected. Yes. So you told me about the authentication thing. Yeah, so it uses multi-factor authentication. Also, the drives themselves are secure and encrypted, so it's secure at rest and secure in flight. And that's extremely important for a lot of our clients. And on the fly, that you can adjust the admin rights. So if you're constantly switching for production crews, if this is like a real high-end film and it's all over the world and you're constantly slinging data around, you know not only is it protected as far as the quality of the drive, because this is, this is like top, top end, but just the actual security of someone even be able to read it. So Absolutely. you guys have thought a lot. Yeah, you've got a user management interface that you can you can deal with to determine who has the ability to unlock and use that device. Sick. Well, uh, I mean, I know a lot of you guys this might be a little out of reach, but we think it's important at Arama TV to let you know just like how far things can go. And sometimes it's just a marker and a magnet. That's <laughs> Carrie, right. It's good stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Well, oh. Give me a real handshake. <laughs> what is this, lady? <laughs> All right, it looks like that's gonna be it for us here in Las Vegas for NB 2022. We saw some people we haven't seen in a while, some new things that we were anxious to check out. So if you have any questions, hit me with a comment down below. I will do my best to answer it. But for now, hit like, share this around, hit subscribe, plus the bell to get notified when we put out more videos like this. We will see you next time, later.